Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about The Great Muppet Caper from 1981. And this is the winner of my Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below and pledge, and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. The Great Muppet Caper is maybe not the best remembered of the kind of first three Muppet films or the ones with Jim Henson's involvement. This is the only Muppet movie with uh, Jim Henson as the credited director, and it is actually his feature film debut. Although he had been a filmmaker for a long time, this is the first feature he was credited with. And although I think most people would use auteur theory rules of Jim Henson on all the Muppet movies and any movie he was majorly creatively involved in, this is, you know, the credit director one and the great muppet caper it wasn't as big of a hit as the muppet movie it wasn't as critically lauded it was adjusted for inflation it's actually the third highest grossing muppet movie the only two who outgrossed it would be the muppets the jason siegel one and the muppet movie so in terms of tickets sold it actually it did pretty well but the muppet movie was a gigantic success and i uh sort of get why maybe this film isn't as fondly remembered. It wasn't one that like when I was a kid and watching Muppet movies more frequently, one I watched as much. I noticed like there doesn't seem to be as good of a reception as the Muppet movie or other Muppet films that people generally really love. And I think a lot of that has to do with the difference between their Muppet movies where even though in the Muppet movie they're very self-aware they know they're in a movie. In The Great Muppet Caper you're very aware that they're sort of telling a story. They break the fourth wall a lot. You're aware that they're, they're big stars and all this stuff. And so there's kind of a weird division, I guess, in certain cases. But I think the reason, like, this movie, I don't think would be considered a total failure or anything like that. I've heard it called a box office disappointment, although looking at the budget in terms of and versus how much it made, I don't think it was, like... A huge disappointment, I just think they thought it would make as much as the Muppet movie, which normally sequels usually do pretty well. I'm surprised this didn't do as well. But I think the Muppets are so likable that I still really like this movie quite a bit. Now, I mean, it has this whole jewel thief idea where Fozzie and Kermit, who are identical twin brothers, and Gonzo, who's just there, I guess, go to England to figure out about uh, Lady Holiday and her missing jewels, who's played by Diana Rigg, and how they're constantly being stolen, which is by her brother, played by Charles Grodin, and three models. And they're trying to figure this out while also Kermit falls in love with Miss Piggy, who he first thinks is Lady Holiday but isn't, and try to solve this kind of jewel heist. And that's sort of what it's about. I think a lot of people complain it spends too much time on the jewel heist. And, and really, for me, anytime I watch it, I sort of forget about the jewel heist for major parts of it. And I'm focused on the Muppets doing their Muppet thing. And then, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, right. Charles Grodin's in this and there's like this jewel heist thing. I think that's sort of what makes this movie because the jewel heist thing is almost like the whole plot line is like the MacGuffin sort of thing where it's like, you know, we know you don't care about this jewel heist thing. It feels like the movie like realized it wasn't something they were that interested in. And so they kept having cutaway gags and other Muppet nonsense going on that like you don't really need a musical sequence for the hotel. You don't really need Kermit and Miss Piggy to have like their own plot line. I mean, I feel like you do because it's a Muppet movie, but it's made in a way that they know that this plot line sort of stinks. So they move on from it. But in a way, that's what I like about it because I generally like the Muppets are so likable. Even in Ebert's review on Siskel and Ebert, he mentions that like the Muppets are so likable. As much as he didn't like parts of the film, he still liked it. And I wouldn't say you're watching this to be a completist. Like I'd say like, oh, well, you'll still have a good time. And actually I went through a weird period where like this would play on TV a lot at night like after I had dinner and I'd end up going like I'll just watch 20 minutes and I'd end up watching like the whole thing but it, it is a weird movie in that I don't think there's too many times I out and out laugh like hysterically like the Muppet movie I'm laughing I'm having a good time there's so many songs I love in it I think you'd be stretching it to say this movie captures any of that but taking it away from that and it's a very different movie in some ways it acts like a sequel the bike sequence in particular because it's like hey remember when we had Kermit on a bike and everyone was like that's so crazy what if we put all the Muppets on a bike. Not the same bike, but different bikes. And 
that's sort of what this film has been heavily criticized for and the sequels of the Muppet movie anytime I tell people like oh do you like the Muppet movie and they really do I go what do you think of the sequels they go oh they just kept putting Muppets on bikes and stuff like what's up with that and uh it's like sort of a fine little sequence a lot of this movie doesn't make a lot of sense so you kind of go with it and it didn't bother me too much but it is like they were like well we have to one up that sequence and that's the only really like, true sequelness I noticed in this in that way but for the most part it plays as a different movie so as much as like I obviously I reviewed the Muppet movie semi recently I don't really view this as that much of a disappointment or change and I probably saw these two together sooner than the people who you know saw the Muppet movie and then this theaters maybe the memories of that film were so built up for them I don't know if it, the original played on TV by this time or something like that but I just don't feel that way because it's such a different kind of movie it's like they're not really trying to make the Muppet movie again except for that sequence they're trying to make their own sort of thing and I know people have a different feeling about the Muppet movies that are like them on an adventure and then them like the, the Muppet movie and then the Muppets like it feels like the public really likes those two and the other ones it's kind of like sometimes people have different opinions on those it feels like those are the two different kinds of Muppet movies and Muppets from Space I guess is its own thing I haven't seen that one in a while with this movie this it, this does kind of start off what a lot of the Muppet movies would be which is the Muppets on an adventure Treasure Island Christmas Carol so forth and it sets up that kind of a Muppet movie I think in all of those they're trying to tell you know classic literature tell a story and even you know I guess this has a lot to do with Muppets Most Wanted which is sort of like a different version of this but that cares more about the plot as well because obviously they're in Europe and there's a crime element and there's identical twins in both so makes sense or identical looking I forget if Kermit's guy is an identical twin in Muppets Most Wanted but in A Great Muppet Caper, I think they sort of realize the Muppets are so funny and there's so many gags they can do with them. They they do that instead. And that's some of my favorite bits. Actually, one of my favorite bits of the whole thing was when they're in the park and Peter Falk like, says, I, let me tell you what your problem is. I, I know what your problem is. And he goes on this very specific rant that like is like so off what's going on with Kermit. It's really funny. I was just like so surprised by that. It was a good gag. And then after that, and he acknowledges, hey, we're trying to make a movie here. And then him and Piggy have like, this kind of at first it's like within the logic and universe of the movie and it breaks of like you know them getting in a fight like their co-stars and that was really funny and those two bits i thought were probably some of my favorite stuff in the whole film the great muppet caper i think is still a really enjoyable movie and it's enjoyable because you have the muppets there at top tier you know you have all the best puppeteers you have jim henson you have everyone like that but i think the the main thing that's really missing from this film is that the muppet movie was a culmination of the talents of jim henson and everyone involved with him and the the Muppets and how far they had gotten to that point. And the Great Muppet Caper just doesn't have that. In fact, he was really making this, you know, because he wanted to make Dark Crystal and it was kind of a deal to get Dark Crystal made. And I think no one probably knew that when they saw this movie, but I think you can kind of tell that this doesn't really represent what the first Muppet movie did. And so comparing the two is like comparing like your like huge passion project to you know, kind of just another kind of job. You might be amazing at that job, and I'd say, like, everyone involved in this did it an outstanding job to do The Great Muppet Caper, but acting like this is anywhere sort of near that in terms of what it meant to Jim Henson and everyone involved, and even in the Defunctland videos about the life of Jim Henson, really got, got the least amount of time of all the Muppet movies he was involved in. I still think it's a really enjoyable film. It's still the Muppets on The Great Muppet Caper. You still, like, have, like, John Cleese and Peter Yusuf and Charles Grodin and Diane and a rig are so game for this. I think if you have actors who are like just in love with being in a Muppet movie and think it's really cool, apparently Diana Rigg mainly did it because her kid was really into Miss Piggy, which I think is cute. Charles Grodin is just like the perfect actor for this. Maybe Dabney Coleman, who is first rate, but he's a good choice. He's a good kind of character actor for the Muppets and his love for Miss Piggy. I really do like this film, but I, I think oftentimes with the jokes and the funniness of the film, I'm more laughing at the idea of a joke than a joke itself. I often don't laugh as much as this film but I still have a good time watching it. And often when I'd watch this film after having dinner and I just end up watching like way too much of it, I'd always, you know, have a pleasant time, but it's sort of kind of like a much lighter, looser frothiness of a Muppet movie. You can kind of sense that that passion isn't there as much, but you can still have a really good time. And maybe also I think the thing is, is like the Muppet show had just ended when this had come out judging by how things replay in syndication who knows if it had really ended for most people at that point i mean it was still probably playing on tv and it it it, it feels like maybe people kind of 
could sense that in a way. They could sense that there was kind of a difference in that. And I think that's probably why this film doesn't live up to all those things, but it's still the Muppets at their top tier thing. And even them like diverting from the plot and making jokes and this whole identical twin thing and having all the presence and charisma that the Muppets had at that time is like still awesome and amazing and still well worth watching The Great Muppet Caper for. So if you have seen The Great Muppet Caper and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And this was the winner of my Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below and pledge and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Thank you.